January 15, St. Morris, Abbot. St. Morris, son of Equitus, a noble of Rome, was born about the year 510. When he was about 12 years old, his father placed him under the care of St. Benedict. When he had grown up, St. Benedict chose him as his coadjutor in the government of the monastery. He was a model of perfection to all his brethren, but especially in the virtue of obedience. St. Placidus, one of his fellow disciples, was going one day to draw water. When he fell into the lake he was trying to take water from and was at once carried away by the current. St. Benedict saw this in spirit in his cell and bade Morris run and draw him out. Having asked and received the Holy Father's blessing, Morris hastened down to the lake, walked upon the waters, thinking he was still on dry land, and dragged Placid out by the hair, without sinking in the least himself. He attributed the miracle to the command and prayers of St. Benedict, but the Holy Abbot to the obedience of his disciple, St. Morris. Later, in the year 543, St. Morris was sent to France to propagate the Order of St. Benedict in that country. He founded the famous abbey of Glanfuel, over which he ruled as abbot for 38 years. In the year 581, he resigned the abbacy and built for himself a small cell near the church of St. Martin, so that, in solitude and prayer, he might prepare himself for his passage into eternity. After two years, he fell sick of a fever he received the sacraments of the church while lying on a sackcloth before the altar of St. Martin, and in that posture he died on the 15th of January in the year 584. Morris was originally buried in the abbey church at Glenfuel when, in the year 868, Odo and the monks of Glenfuel were obliged to flee to Paris in the face of marauding Vikings. The remains of St. Morris were translated to the abbey of St. Pierre de Fosse which was later renamed saint mar de fosse in the year 1750 the relics were relocated to saint germain de pre where they remained until dispersed and lost by a parisian mob during the french revolution the veneration of St. Morris slowly spread to the monasteries throughout France and by the 11th century had been adopted by Monte Cassino in Italy, along with a revived veneration of St. Placidus. By the late Middle Ages, the veneration of St. Morris, often associated with that of St. Placidus, had spread to all Benedictine monasteries. St. Morris was favored by God with the gift of miracles. To show in what high degree the saint possessed the gift of miracles, it is sufficient to cite just a few examples of how he miraculously cured the sick and restored to health those that were stricken with a grievous affliction. Beyond his walking on water and saving Placidus, a few more examples of miracles wrought by the saint as related by the monk St. Faustus follow. They were invariably wrought by the means of the sign of the cross and the relic of the true cross which he had taken to France. When Morris, at that time prior of the Abbey of Monte Cassino, was returning with the brethren from gathering the harvest in the fields, he met a boy who was mute and crippled. The mother and father of the boy cast themselves at the feet of the saint and implored him to cure their child. St. Morris, having for some time given himself to prayer, imposed upon the head of the boy his stole and made the sign of the cross over him, and saying, In the most holy undivided trinity, and supported by the merits of the most holy father Benedict, I bid you to rise stand upon your feet and be cured and forthwith the boy rose walked around with a loud voice and praised and glorified god in another example a certain vicar had been sent by innocent the bishop of mon to monte cassino in order to petition saint benedict to send some monks to france arriving at a place called versella the vicar fell down headlong from a high stairway in the place where he was lodging his body was so crushed by the fall that his life was despaired of. His right shoulder, arm, and hand had swelled with such inflammation that their amputation was deemed necessary. Recourse was then had to their companion, St. Morris, who was engaged in prayer in the oratory. Moved by the earnest supplications of his brethren and the misery of the sick man, the saint cast himself prostrate at the foot of the altar, pouring forth his soul
soul in fervent prayer. Having finished praying, he took from the altar the case of the relic which had been sent him by his master, St. Benedict, and went to the bedside of the sick man. Having exposed the relic of the cross, he made the sign of the cross over every part of the arm from the shoulder to the fingers, while praying earnestly. When his prayer was ended, all the poisoned blood by which the vicar's arm had been inflamed began to flow off from three different places in his arm, and his arm was cured. Beyond being the co-patron with St. Placidus of the Benedictine novices and oblates, St. Morris is the patron of the disabled and crippled. He is invoked against rheumatism, epilepsy, hoarseness, cold. He is the patron of cobblers, coopersmiths, shoemakers, porters, tinkers, tailors, lantern and candle makers, among others.